Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next science lesson. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, I'd like to encourage you to join us in our to enable grade 11 science class. And I'm gonna actually show you how to do that. We actually can see the numbers of the classes and we know that there are quite a few people joining us, but you need to join us in our class. And the reason I would like you to join us in the class is because I would like to make this as interactive as possible. And um, the idea behind these lessons would be for you guys, to, for me to teach a section and then to give you a quiz um, don't worry, it is anonymous. I won't see who does what, but I would say see that out of the 50 people who did the quiz, maybe 20 people didn't understand question two. And then I'd go and look at question two as and I go, oh, OK, they don't understand Newton's third law. And then I'd go and teach it again. So that would be the idea behind this. OK, so that is why we'd like you to join the Tune Able class. So, yeah. Is how we do it. So I'm going to use Firefox. I'm going to double click on that. And OK, there we go. And then what we're going to do is you're going to type in to enable.org and you click on it and you'll get to a dashboard that looks similar to mine. Mine's a bit different for the simple reason that um, simple reason that it is Sorry. Um, so it's uh, okay. It'll. Um, it mine's a bit different because I've got my classrooms because I'm a teacher. Okay, but you guys will have this block here on the left hand side, which says curriculum learner and teacher resources. So what you guys need to do is you need to go and choose a subject. So you'll go along and you will choose a subject. Now. Then the cool thing about to enable is it offers all these subjects as you can see from here and it offers all these resources at the moment we only have lessons in mathematics and physical science for grade 10 through to 12. so i would suggest at the moment like for example this lesson you would want to go and choose physical science so you click on physical science and you then would click on the grade 11 and then it would say enroll Right, and now it says you are registered for the physical science grade 11. Awesome, okay. Then what you can do is you will then see, for example, on the left hand side, there are a whole bunch of little icons and the most important icon is the one here that says, okay, well, let me just go through what they are. There is home and then this one here is your upcoming events. Okay, which you could see is what you are looking at now. I'll talk about this in a second. I just want to show you what the other ones are. This one here is your um, assessments. So they could be some assessments that I will give you. And this is what where you would find the question sheets that I told you about that we could maybe go and ask you to do and see if you can actually answer the questions. And then there are other sections here. And this here is your messaging, which is where you could message me. So let's go back to the upcoming events. And this is where you would find our lessons. OK, and you can then if you go to July. OK, these are all the lessons that have been before. OK, so you could actually obviously they were only for your class, the class that you've registered for. Right. So you wouldn't see all of these. So then you could actually go and view any one of these and go and watch old lessons. So if you're not watching a live lesson now, you could actually watch an old lesson. You could catch up. So, for example, today we are carrying on with something. If you wanted to see what yes, what Tuesday's lesson was about, you could go and have a look. So we're in August and I am wanting to talk about today's lesson. So we're going to view today's event. Um, and you'll see it says you can it says to enables online school grade 11 science. That's the class you've registered for and don't worry about any of this other stuff. OK, just means OK, thanks. I've read it. Open live TV link. OK, now this is going to be a bit weird because obviously we're seeing my version of me watching this. So you're going to get a horrible sound coming through, but don't worry about it too much. It's just to show you. So and there's a little bit of a lag, which is good. So now the options are either to join the meeting as a grade 11 science as a guest or as a member of the team. Ignore this. This is not you. This is me and my boss and his whole team. OK, yeah, is what you press. You press the big green button. Join the event. 
Okay, and what will come up is a screen and it will start playing. And what you will hear is... Um, there's a little bit of a lag, which is good. So now the options are either to join the meeting... And there you go. So I've obviously switched the sound down because you don't need to hear me saying what I've already said. So that is how you would actually get to be at our lesson and then yeah this person button there there's message the studio and at that point you can go hi i am really struggling with something or another it doesn't matter what you're struggling with um i'm struggling with be specific please um newton two Okay, um, could you revise, whatever, whatever, and you send the message, and then I will get it. Now, the two options, either if um, at the moment I will, I don't generally read my messages while I'm teaching, for the simple reason that then I get distracted and I forget what I'm saying, but depending on the type of lesson, I might say to you guys, please interact with me, in which case you could message me, or I will always read the messages after the lesson. So if you guys say we really need you to do a certain section, then I can prepare lessons on that section, etc, etc. Or if you've got exam paper questions that you're struggling with, etc. So that's what the story is about, and that is why I would like you to join our class. Right, having said that, I would like to carry on with today's lesson. And in today's lesson, we're going to carry on with Newton's third law. We finished going through a whole bunch of two body system questions in the last lesson, and which were based on Newton's second law. And we introduced Newton's third law. And remember, we said that this we said that Newton one and two applies to a single object on which one or more forces are acting. Okay, we said that. If you remember, we said that Newton's first law was basically saying that if you have an object and it's stationary, it's going to stay stationary unless you have an external net acting on it. Or if it's moving at a constant velocity, it's going to continue moving at a constant velocity unless there is a resultant external force on it, okay? That's what Newton's one says. Newton two quantifies it. Newton two says F net equals mass times acceleration, okay? So basically it says that the object is going to accelerate with an acceleration that is directly proportional, acceleration directly proportional to the force, the net force, and it's inversely proportional to the mass. So that quantifies it. Newton's third law actually works on the basis that there are two objects interacting with each other. So, for example, a man pushing a motor car. So, what it's saying is that there are two objects. Yeah, there is a man and there is a motor car and they're interacting. Or, when you shake hands with someone, there is obviously two people interacting with each other as their hands grip each other's hands. Okay, whatever. A horse pulling a cart. Okay, and you standing on the floor. So both of those or all of these are examples of Newton's third law. Right, so Newton's third law states that when object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal but opposite force on object A. Now I know a whole bunch of you will have learned the thing, and I know that, I mean, you know it from junior school. Um, you got it for every action is an equal and opposite reaction and that's the one that they state in the movies and everything else yes that's great that is newton's third law but dear old mr newton if you actually read his books it's quite difficult to read them because they're in all ye oldie english but when you read his books he actually puts provisors around them he says that this is true for certain things, okay? And because they didn't translate that through to the textbooks, the teachers these days and the government and the curriculum advisors have said, no, let's not say that because it's not actually true. Let's rather use this law. So this is the law you state. You don't state for every action is equal and opposite reaction because that's not strictly true. This is true. When object A exerts a force on object B, then object B exerts an equal but opposite force on object A. And you need to be 
able to state this word perfectly. Okay, so examples of action-reaction pairs. So an action-reaction pair is made up of your Newton's forces, okay? Obviously, we've said that if A exerts a force on B, then B is going to exert an equal but opposite force on object A, and that is called an action-reaction pair. So for example, if your tire, I apologize for the typing, the print is obviously American. If your tire is pushing on the road, pushing backwards, then the road is pushing on the tire, okay? If the rocket is pushing on the gases, then the gases are obviously pushing forward on the rocket. Similarly, if a man is pulling on a string, then a spring, then the spring is pulling on the man. And we'll talk about this for a second, but if, for example, you think of yourself, let's say you are sitting at a desk. Yes, I will never win any awards for my drawings. Let's say you're sitting at a desk, okay, and I don't know, you've got spiky hair and big eyes and a mouth. Okay, so there is a force of you on the chair and the force of the chair on you, okay? There's a force of the chair on the ground or on the floor and the floor on you, I mean on the chair, okay? Do you understand that? So there's an action-reaction pair and there's an action-reaction pair. Okay, similarly, if you had, oh, I hate drawing this type of thing, but if you've got your hand, okay? Yes, okay, it's going to be a Bart Simpson hand and you have a book, and it is holding the book up against a wall. Okay, yes, I know, it looks more like a foot. It doesn't matter. Okay, if you have an appendage, and your appendage is pushing on a book, okay, here's your book, and that's pushing against a wall, then there are a couple of action-reaction pairs happening. There is your appendage on the book, and the book on your appendage. Similarly, you have got the book on the wall, and the wall on the book, okay? And these action-reaction pairs are equal in length, obviously. If they weren't equal, then your appendage, whether this be a hand or foot or whatever it is, would go through the book, or the book would be pushing up against your appendage, right? If this was different strengths, then the book would either be going through the wall or the wall would be pushing the book up. Okay, do you understand that? But what's important about this is it can actually happen over a distance, over a distance. It doesn't have to be in contact. For example, the force of gravity. And yeah, we have that the earth is pulling on the ball and the ball is pulling on the earth. Okay, the earth is pulling on the ball and the ball is pulling on the earth. And yeah, people tend to say, well, if that's the case, why don't we see the earth moving? Well, let's think about that. If equals ma, right? So do you agree that the force of the earth, this is the force of the earth on the book, okay? The force of the earth on the book is equal to mass 